careful what you wish for. End game, Spider-Man! Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host with another marvelous video. Spider-Man has to be one of the friendliest superheroes ever to exist. We all could relate to the one teenager who's just trying to make the best of his high school. Our neighborhood superhero has fought countless villains and solved crime mysteries in and out of NYC, from an alien symbiote to a man with metal tentacles. This web-shooting superhero didn't hesitate to strike down wicked criminals despite his young age. So without further ado, let's get straight to the video. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Kingpin. We're all aware of this ruthless white coat criminal who disguises himself as a businessman in front of the whole world. He's no other than Wilson Fisk, whose villainous alter ego is known as Kingpin, one of the most influential crime lords on earth. His father was a small-time criminal whose wish was to make it to the Mafia, and Wilson tried to join his gang to make a positive impression on his father. Later on, he got arrested, but his father escaped. This resulted him landing up in prison. However, he didn't disclose the names of any of his accomplices, and his sentence was extended. Fisk gained vast knowledge in prison, which allowed him to establish and expand his criminal empire. He's gotten into illegal transport, which also resulted in blinding a young boy for life. He has made numerous evil plans while collaborating with Alistair Smythe, Hobgoblin, Norman Osborn, and Herbert Landon. Later on, he kills his father for betraying him. Sensing Spider-Man's appearance could jeopardize his crime empire, he wanted to terminate him. He even wished to create the new Spider Slayer, who would have the potential to assassinate Spidey. Not only this, he'd gotten his hands on radioactive space material Prometheum X, which holds power to destroy the planet. He stole them and attempted to steal the control rods from the military base as well. Many more of his cruel intentions and criminal plans have gone down the drain by the superhero Spider-Man. Fisk's superpowers are his knowledge and intelligence in crime and management, though he possesses no no superhuman abilities. His physical attributes add to his strength. His body mass is made from 350 pounds of muscle and fat. He's capable of taking down Red Skull's robot with bare hands and even crushing the ribs of Spider-Man with a simple hug. In the fight with Daredevil, he broke free from the shackles without any superhuman strength. Green Goblin Alter ego of industrialist Norman Osborn the Green Goblin is one of the greatest and most significant arch-enemies of Spider-Man. He's also the one responsible for Mary Jane's disappearance. His identity was later taken by his son, Harry Osborn. Kingpin's heavy influence was directly shining upon Oscrop Industries. Along with his assistant, Wardell Strom, Osborn decided to kill Kingpin as the pressure had gone too over the top. He created Hobgoblin with the same intention, but failed to execute the plan due to Spider-Man's interference. Voiced by Neil Ross, the character of Osborn has developed a multiple personality disorder Order, which resulted in both of his personalities communicating with each other. This has mainly taken place due to a chemical explosion that created the persona of the Green Goblin. The character's cruelty comes to light when he abducts Felicia Hardy and pushes her off the glider. He also threw the board of directors of Oscorp to an underwater cavern. Though Spider-Man saved Felicia and defeated the Green Goblin, in Osborne's memory, the event was really vague. Spider-Man No Way Home features the character as the main villain. Not only does he possess more agility and strength than Spider-Man, and he uses so several self-designed weapons such as razor bats, electric gloves, pumpkin bombs, and smart bombs. He's lost every bit of his sanity, but gains speed and reflexes like a cat. Green Goblin's healing abilities allow him to regenerate injured organs as well. Lizard. The biology teacher and scientist Dr. Kurt Connors gets desperate to regrow his lost arm. His expertise lies in reptiles and cell regeneration so he doesn't hesitate to test the reptile potion on himself with the hope of regenerating his arm again. The serum worked to an extent where he was able to regrow it, but it also turned him into a wicked lizard. Mutated Connors was traveling through the sewers of New York as a nature of the reptile animal. The tale of the strange lizard soon went out, and even more when his wife, Martha Connor, was kidnapped by him. Once again, Spider-Man saved Martha and cured Connors with gene-cleansing equipment. The cunning mind of the lizard also wanted to supplant the reptiles to rule the Earth. He wished to gather an army of reptiles to take over the world. Connors' vast knowledge of science and chemicals helped Spider-Man create the reverse serum, and it did work to an extent. Connors didn't mutate back to the evil reptile form, but he could never really free himself from the lizard. It even went on a killing spree around New York City. It resulted in many lives and even Calypso's death. With superhuman strength, the lizard is capable of 
of lifting up to 12 tons. It stands 5 feet and 11 inches and weighs 175 pounds. The reptile's abilities and powerful leg muscles allow him to jump high and broad to greater distances. His skin is tough as an alligator, which makes him capable of tolerating the penetration of bullets as well. He can also run at a speed of 45 miles per hour. When he takes over the mind of one of the most intelligent scientists, it also results in telepathic abilities that help him communicate with other reptiles who are within a radius of a mile. Created by legendary Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, the Crooked Lizard first made its appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man in 1963. Venom Venom comes first to mind whenever Spider-Man supervillains are talked about. Venom's origin comes from the planet Clintar, where a race of symbiotes rule supreme. The symbiote hosts itself on a human and creates a combined personality, but sometimes it takes over the mind as it has a tendency to be the dominant one. As Venom takes over Eddie Brock, his hatred for Spider-Man grows more. The symbiote's hate towards Spidey has grown since the rejection from Peter's body. Spider-Man rejected Venom when he figured that the symbiote was taking more control over his mind. Eddie Brock, on the other hand, holds him responsible for the poor living conditions he's suffering from. However, unlike other ruthless supervillains, Venom has moral grounds for not hurting the innocent. He was even seen performing heroic deeds when necessary. But the combination of darker impulses and bitter grudges of Venom has proven nearly lethal to our friendly neighborhood superhero. Venom holds the vast knowledge of survival from millions of civilizations that he shares with Eddie. It helps in combat and survival, as well as during power enhancement. Venom has made Spider-Man his host earlier and obtained his powers through his symbiote, abilities. His powers include clinging to the walls and web shooting, just like Spidey. He also possesses extreme agility along with superhuman strength. There is no doubt that Venom's webbing is stronger than Spider-Man, but so is he. He's even immune to the spider senses, which makes his attack sneaky and unstoppable. The spider senses find the symbiote to be friendly, as he previously bonded with Spider-Man. He is also capable of turning into a liquid form after the escape from Dormammu's dimensions. Do you think Dormammu introduced him to new powers? Tell us in the comments. Michael Morbius Dr. Michael Morbius, who's now known as the Nobel-winning biochemist, gets desperate to find a cure for his cursed blood disease. In his young days, he was infected by a mysterious disease that turned out to be lethal for his countrymen. The suffering around him disturbed him, and he was determined to find a remedy for the illness in America. He was enrolled under Dr. Kurt Connor, one of the finest biology teachers in the world, and became one of his top students. He shares a bittersweet relationship with Connor's other student, Peter Parker. He attempts an experiment with the intent of treatment, but accidentally transforms himself into a vampire that holds a lust for blood like a real vampire. The wicked mind of the vampire takes over his, and he gains superhuman strength. Morbius requires fresh blood for survival, but after killing his victims, his mind returns back to a stable condition. His lust turns into guilt and self-loathing. Though Spider-Man tried to change him back to his original form, he failed. This living vampire has the ability to fly and also has super strength. His senses are so advanced that he can hear the heartbeats of other living beings around him. Morbius is also intelligent, and he uses that to attack victims. He also has healing powers and sharp reflexes. Without blood, Morbius simply cannot survive and suffers utter pain. Once he's exposed to sunlight, he'll be returning to the human form of Dr. Michael. Created by Jill Kane and Roy Thomas, Morbius surely is one of the prime villains of Spider-Man, who occasionally becomes allies with him. Dr. Octopus Who doesn't remember Dr. Octopus? Regardless of his viciousness, this Spider-Man supervillain has to be everyone's favorite. He is what his name sounds like. Otto Octavius is a talented scientist who's developed mechanical octopus-like tentacles that are attached to his upper back. These arms can be controlled with his mind, but you would be surprised to know that Octavius didn't really intend on doing this. He was often picked on by his colleagues as he wished to design a cold fusion battery, which seemed impossible to others. Hardy Foundation and Anastasia have funded his research for some time, but due to a lack of progress, he decided to cut it. It resulted in Octavius being forced to move to the basement without any necessary protective gear. An unfortunate event occurred when the batteries exploded during the experiment, resulting in extreme heat, which caused the mechanical tentacles to get fused to Otto's spine. This made him vindictive and enraged. Dr. Octopus's metal tentacles can extend to greater distances. Not just this, but they are incredibly strong and capable of causing serious damage to the opponent. However, they are vulnerable to magnets. Previously, the metal arms have taken damage from lasers and acids as well. So, regardless of the indestructible claims of Octavius, the tentacles do have some weaknesses. Oh. 
Carnage. This blood-chilling spidey villain is no other than Carnage, who was once known as Cletus Cassidy, a ruthless serial killer. Cassidy and Venom's offspring alien symbiote merged during a prison breakout, resulting in the birth of psychotic Carnage. Unlike Eddie Brock's Venom, Carnage refers to himself as I instead of we. This shows how evil and dangerous he can be, as he thinks of himself as a singular being. He's completely influenced Cassidy by merging with his bloodstream and taking over his mind. This symbiote has adapted into the insane mind of Cassidy, and thus the tale of destruction begins. It reattached to his body a couple of times and also saved his life. It attached itself to Silver Surfer and even Dr. Octopus. To stop his killing spree, Spider-Man and Venom actually made allies to stop the demolition. Unlike like Venom, Carnage is invulnerable to high-pitched noises but can't form webbing. He extends the tendrils that he uses as webbing. He too possesses superhuman strength and agility. Undetectable by spidey senses, Carnage surely does take full advantage of it. However, he's yet to get a grasp of his psychic abilities, and extreme heat is one of his main weaknesses. Carnage is merciless, wicked, and shows no sign of remorse. The insane and murderous mind of his host only fires up his villainous nature. Craven, the hunter. When Sergei Nikolovich Kravinov's fiance, Dr. Mariah Crawford, was attacked, he tried his best to fight and save his love. However, it left Sergei injured and at life risk. Dr. Mariah then used a drug that could cure him, knowing the severe and dangerous effects. Not having any other choice, she decided to use the wonder drug on Sergei, which resulted in a quick recovery. But to her utter shock, Sergei had developed a vigorous hunting tendency, along with better strength and speeding ability. The wonder serum had also made him hunt like an animal, and his senses have also drastically increased like wild animals. He gave himself the name of Craven the Hunter, and with that, continued to go on a hunting spree while showcasing beast-like and ruthless animalistic nature. He has been both foe and friend with our neighborhood superhero. With Dr. Crawford's help, he was able to return to his human nature, but it was quite on and off. Craven holds vast knowledge of animal actions and tactics. His animal senses are as strong as wolverines, which helps him track down prey easily. His abilities make him the skilled and proficient hunter that he is. He has a couple of tricks, such as potions and powders as traps, that help him while hunting. The wonder drug gives him a boost of endurance, agility, and strength that makes him similarly powerful as Spider-Man. The character was voiced by the great Greg Berger, and he's even getting a movie of his own in 2023. Fans are curious to know how the character Craven will do outside of his familiar setting without Parker. Shocker. In the comics, the real name of this Spider-Man villain is Herman Schultz. His true identity was never revealed in the series, and he was not seen without his mask and suit. Though the reasons remain unknown, let's explore the character and his classic traits. This mercenary antagonist has been a member of Insidious Six and often worked for the evil Kingpin. He was appointed to attack the journalist Eddie Brock, as he had evidence of the Promethean X being stolen from the space shuttle by the Rhino. The Shocker committed several crimes and abductions and used his gauntlets to attack. In the comics, he's made his vibro shock weapon as well as his suit all by himself, with his self-taught engineering knowledge. Shocker's gauntlets can fire electric blasts, but he himself remains safe from it due to his protection suit. He was seen to be abandoning his suit when it got drenched in the water, and that made him vulnerable to water. His self-taught engineering skills gave him the advantage to modify his weaponry as he wishes. The Vibro Shock is powerful and causes direct physical damage during combat. Venom and Spider-Man had to make allies to fight off this vicious villain. Scorpion. Scorpion wasn't really a monstrous villain at first, but in fact, just a regular private investigator. However, he was constantly picked on and bullied. Tragedy occurs when Gargan manages to spy on Peter to find out the secret behind his access to well-taken Spidey photos. When Peter finds out, he confronts him at Daily Bugle, and in the presence of everyone, Gargan was web-trapped by Spider-Man. Humiliated by Spidey, Gargan was enraged by the disrespect he would receive from other people. Farley Stilwell, who is an ESU scientist, was paid to turn Gargan into some superhuman. Stillwell injected scorpion DNA into his body as scorpions are natural hunters of spiders. The Neogenic Recombinator has exposed him to radiation, thus giving him superhuman strength. Gargan has a Scorpio-like suit that holds the ability to spray acid on the opponent. He's made numerous attempts to kill and hurt Spider-Man, and was even able to knock him out completely. This Insidious Six member has gained immense strength as well as intense speed. A scorpion uses its tail as the main form of attack as it sprays acid. Not just this, a metal blade is also attached to the tip that can be fatal to his enemies. His suit has claws as fingertips that make him a wall crawler, just like Spider-Man.
Hydro Man. Hydro Man was Mary Jane's high school sweetheart. Yep, you heard us. Morris Bench made Mary's life miserable by being a control freak and hell of a jealous boyfriend. For this reason, she broke up with him and making him obsessed with Mary. Due to Morris's unpleasant behavior, he was soon expelled from school and sent to the Navy by his parents. In an accident, Bench fell into the bottom of the ocean and was exposed to a mysterious gas. This not only transformed him into a being made of water, but he also gained the ability to control the water. He abducted Mary Jane when she refused to take him back and got involved in several crimes to impress her. This made him enemies with Spider-Man, who finally defeated him. But Miles Warren made a clone of his DNA to recreate his mind. Hydro-Man controls the water around him and uses it as a combat tactic. His body is entirely made of water, and he can propel it like a fire hose. Due to the nature of his liquid body, he can travel through the narrowest pipes, sinks, and even sprinklers. His powers strengthen when he is around larger water bodies and weakens as he goes further away from the water. One of his main weaknesses is that the water particles in him tend to evaporate during warmer days. Rhino. Alexei Sisevich was a part of the Russian Mafia and already indulged in the crime world. He's brutal and seeks evil ways to get money and power. Alexei's hunger for wealth went to such an extreme extent that he underwent several radiations and chemical transformations to gain superhuman strength. In the comics, the scientists who transformed him, Igor and Georgi, gave him a suit that was utterly invulnerable to acid. This powerful armor bonded with his body and appeared as a rhinoceros. Due to Alexei's low intelligence, he seemed less likely to to betray his creators, thus ensuring the strong villain's loyalty. In his first mission, he wished to kidnap the son of Daily Bugle's publisher, J. Jonah Jameson. Spider-Man intervened in his mission as he went to New York City to abduct John Jameson and discovered two main weaknesses of Rhino. This villain might be muscular and fierce, but due to his lesser intelligence, his only way to attack is by his horn. He also can't change direction easily or halt his movements. However, he possesses very extreme strength that he can lift 75 tons of weight even without putting his armor on. His speeding ability helps him chase and escape quite quickly as well. His suit is highly heat resistant and bulletproof, thus avoiding physical damage. It also enhances his strength, as he can lift more than 100 tons and can penetrate through the hardest metals. You turned him against me. Now what? This. Mysterio. Mysterio's original name is Quinton Beck, an expert in stunts and special effects design. Though somewhat successful, he's not gotten much recognition. Frustrated by this, he entered the field of crime. His eyes lit up when he thought of impersonating Spider-Man and committing crimes. Later, he can stop the pseudo-Spider-Man and be a hero. But nothing about this sounds like a well-thought plan, does it? After keeping track of Spidey's movements, tactics, and powers for a while, he could replicate his behavior and pose as him. He committed a few robberies while pretending to be the web-slinger, and it didn't go well. Later, he joined the evil Insidious Six after Kingpin helped him escape prison. However, he was replaced by Vulture in Insidious Six. Though Quentin Beck has no superhuman strength, his expertise in special effects and illusions are pretty deceiving to the opponent. Since he was a stuntman, his combat skills are also strong during a one-on-one -on -one fight. He uses his skills to misdirect his opponents and possesses magic abilities. Mysterio's suit is also equipped with several weapons that help him match to wall crawler's power. His gloves fire later laser beams, but they can also help him fly around to cause disorientation and distraction. Beck often creates a smoke illusion to escape, which also comes from his suit. He uses this as an illusion in a way that Mysterio appears to be teleporting. Punisher. As the popularity of this anti-hero keeps growing, we just had to keep him in the top 15. Frank Castiglione has received numerous awards for his bravery and dedication to serving his country in the US Marines and Navy. But unfortunate events occurred when his wife Maria, daughter Lisa, and son named Frank Jr. were murdered as they were witnesses of a gang-related murder. Castle survived his wounds, but the misery of his whole family, gone in seconds, didn't sit right with him. He made it his life mission to punish every criminal for their wrongdoings. He ultimately represented himself with the skull symbol we're all aware of. His main foe remained to be the one who took the life of his family, Billy Russo, who's also known as Jigsaw. In Amazing Spider-Man 129, the Punisher was appointed by Jackal to kill Spider-Man. Before we spoil the details, just know that Punisher was later exposed to Jackal's cruel intentions and made Castle do the dirty work. He vowed to take his vengeance against Jackal and left Spidey in peace. Punisher is excellent in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and his strength makes him a skilled fighter. Though he doesn't possess any superpower, his sharp marksmanship surely comes as the doom of death to his opponents. He uses a military-grade bulletproof vest to help during combat. 
with a high tolerance to pain and vast knowledge of military tricks up his sleeve. With a high tolerance to pain and vast knowledge of military tricks up his sleeve, one should only hope not to come into a close encounter with this wild combatant. You again. Revolting, isn't it? Tombstone Tombstone is one of the notable Spider-Man villains who worked for Kingpin and Hammerhead. He's also known as Lonnie Lincoln and was often bullied in school. He wanted to portray an intimidating image of himself to others, so he filed his teeth after school. Having a rough high school life, he would often pick up traits such as picking fights or enhanced fighting skills that would intimidate others. The only person who didn't pick on him is Joe Robertson, who grew up as a reporter. In the meantime, Lonnie became quite famous in the streets with the name Tombstone. Robertson witnessed some informant's murder that Lincoln had killed and testified against him after a long 20 years. This got Tombstone arrested, but due to the crime of withholding evidence, the law didn't spare Robertson either. They broke free from prison, and Tombstone sought revenge for betraying him. He set up a trap to kill Robertson, but with Spider-Man's interference, the ambush didn't occur. This made the web-slinger one of his enemies, but before he could take a step, he was shot by Robertson. Later on, the experimental chemical Diox-3 in the room gave him superhuman powers. This Sinister 12 group member can survive without the need for oxygen. The chemical has given him superhuman strength, and he can lift more than six tons. He's also good with firearms, and with the newly gained stamina boost, he can be unstoppable sometimes. And no, we haven't forgotten this ruthless villain's blade-like sharp teeth that he uses during combat. Electro. Reinhold Schmidt, who later became a supervillain, was previously a detective under Moscow Police Department. He's been searching for his father, Red Skull, who had access to an anonymous weapon that would favor the Nazi community in World War II. Kragov even tried impersonating Red Skull in order to get access to the mystery aid. Kragov's adopted brother, Chameleon, went behind Kingpin's back and used the Doomsday Weapon on Kragov, thus becoming the living god of electricity, Electro. He became more powerful than his father and wanted nothing more than to be the ultimate ruler of the world. Spider-Man and Captain America have teamed up to stop the overpowering Electro by destroying the Vortex. Their heroic attempt has prevented the Electro and Red Skull from returning back. In the comics, the real identity of Electro was Maxwell Dillon, who was an electronic engineer. He gained his electrical powers after a lightning bolt struck him while he was fixing some power lines. As his name suggests, Electro controls electricity and even devices that run on electric power. He has the ability to control satellites, cameras, television, and even shields helicarrier. Not just this, he fires electric bolts that can severely damage the opponent or throw them off track. He's also capable of flying and hovering around, using his electricity-controlling powers. Chameleon, stop! Whoa, nice haircut. Chameleon, the Insidious Six member, is a regular hitman and an internationally wanted terrorist. He can modify his voice and appearance to impersonate anyone. He is the stepson of Red Skull, who is not any less wicked and twisted-minded than his brother Electro. He's previously made allies with Richard Fist to frame our friendly neighborhood superhero. He also got on board on a mission to attack the United Nations, but was later stopped with the help of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Spider-Man's teamwork. Though he worked for Kingpin, he wasn't hesitant to turn his back on him. He found the Doomsday Weapon after betraying Kingpin. Later, he broke the Insidious Six's faith to release Red Skull through a dishonest plan. Ultimately, with Captain's help, Spider-Man could web-trap Chameleon and defeat Electro. Chameleon can take the appearance of anyone, as a serum has altered his skin pigmentation. Presumably, it happened on the mutagenic level and is irreversible. His suit is made of memory material that sends nerve impulses each time he wishes to change his appearance. Created by legendary Stan Lee and Steve Ditko, the first appearance of Chameleon was in The Amazing Spider-Man No. Number one, released in 1963. Fun! I hate to bust up the party, but I will anyway. <laughs> Hobgoblin Jason Philip Marsdale has been involved with the crime lord and unethical standards of the underworld. He did not cut ties with the corrupted world and continued to be one of the most notorious villains of Spider-Man. Founder of Oscor Technologies, Norman Osborne appointed Jason to kill in exchange for money. Norman supplied the necessary weapons, and Jason's crime-lusting nature could not contain his excitement. To alternate his identity, he wore his yellow mask and armor, along with blue tights and a black belt. With an orange cape and red eyes, Hobgoblin's first villainous attack started out in public, where Spider-Man managed to stop him. Though he possesses no special abilities, he likes to get on his Goblin Glider, which allows him to fly. This technologically advanced glider also 
carries several weapons and lasers. One of his other major weapons is pumpkin bombs, which are explosives and also spray non-lethal gas. He also carries smart bombs, which are again explosives that get released from the glider. These bombs are made in a way that they are able to track and follow the target. Hobgoblin uses electrified gloves that shock the targeted person. Not just this, he's also one of the few who doesn't hesitate to use an energy gun. He's previously stolen the time dilation accelerator that can open a portal. He's used it between two locations whenever he wanted to steal something. The electrified gloves and time dilation accelerator are two devices that run out of power pretty quickly, and he was seen abandoning the gloves in frustration. However, Green Goblin has taken the other device away from him shortly after. Hammerhead Based in New York, Hammerhead is a gangster who's desperate to climb to the top of the crime ladder. He's worked for Kingpin and also Silvermane. So, how did he become this vicious villain? A minor mafia enforcer was left to die near a mob movie poster after some conflict. His skull was severely damaged along with other bodily injuries. He was discovered by a surgeon named Jonas Harrow, who replaced the mind and bones of this gunman with steel alloy made out of adamantium. This has made his head broad and weird, looking like a hammer. Upon recovery, his mind couldn't get over the mobster movie poster and it had somehow altered his personality. He worked with several crime families and was extremely dedicated to being at the top of the underworld's mafia racket. He soon earned a deadly gangster reputation and was known as the Hammerhead. Hammerhead possessed his superhuman strength and agility that gives him the upper hand in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As his personality has been altered, he's somewhat mentally unstable. He uses an exoskeleton that has the ability to increase his strength, but Human Torch is able to destroy its core in a battle. He often bangs his head into his enemies, which can be fatal at times. Apart from Tommy guns, he often uses stun bullets that shock the opponents. But here's one of the things with Hammerhead that we can all relate to. He's a food enthusiast and previously bonded with the Owl as they shared similar interests. Vulture. Adrian Toomes was an aerodynamics engineer who really wasn't fond of aging, after all. Why, you ask? Well, this supervillain has made a technologically advanced youth restoring device. Wait, but what part of that makes him a villain? Hmm, his device would suck someone else's youth and would make Toomes' appearance younger for a temporary time period. Adrian was obsessed with the idea of flying and dedicated a lot of his time to research. Though Norman Osborn had no hopes for this, Toomes eventually discovered a pair of wings that gave him the ability to fly. These wings were anti-gravitational, and the technology was from the Tablet of Time. He's also used his youth-restoring device on Spider-Man, which resulted in absorbing Spidey's disease and thus becoming a man-spider. He had no control over his transformations anymore and kept on going back and forth from his older version to the younger one. Luckily, the wall-crawler Spider-Man was able to escape from his captivity. Without spoiling it too much for you, let's explore the Vulture's ultimate abilities. His wings don't just help him fly, but also cut through the hardest objects due to their super sharp build quality. The wings are strapped like a harness to his body and allow him to fly at 95 miles an hour. He wears his youth absorbent device as a glove, but the effect of it only lasts for a short time. When he used the device on Spider-Man, he absorbed his disease. As a result, his powers were also obtained by the Vulture. He gained the ability of web shooting, wall crawling, strength, agility, oh, and lastly, spider sense. Yep, that's right. This is why he wanted to hold Spidey captive, so he could use the device on him repetitively. Alongside, Vulture uses a laser gun that adds an advantage in the battle. Herbert Landon Herbert Landon was an upcoming scientist who later became the CEO of Brand Corporation, that fronted to cure mutants of their mutations, but had a hidden agenda to kill them instead. He hired McCoy to find a cure for mutation, but it backfired and turned McCoy into a blue furry monster instead. Landon is later employed by Kingpin, who believes that the scientist will create a serum that will turn humans into genetically modified super mutants that will be his personal army. But Landon wanted to kill mutants due to immense hatred for them, and Hobgoblin got a whiff of this hidden agenda. He started blackmailing Landon for money, and this angered him to the extent that he had a physical fight with his blackmailer. While they were fighting, Hobgoblin dropped his glider, and Landon dived for it without thinking about what would happen to him if he fell into the vat of mutant-killing chemicals below. Everyone thought he was dead, but he emerged as a giant green reptilian monster who hungered for electricity so much that he was in constant pain. The X-Men learned about Landon's rampage in the city and captured him with great difficulty, and then tried to cure him of his reptilian form. He could only be half-cured, leaving Landon with a half-human, half-mutant body 
without any powers. Landon was transformed into a 30-foot giant green reptile who always hungered for electricity as his life source. But since he required it in enormous amounts, he was in constant pain and went on a rampage due to that. It could grow directly proportional to the amount of electricity he consumed and could fire bolts at his enemies. But after he was cured, he lost all of his powers and was only left with a half-mutant body. His appearance is similar to Two-Face from the Batman series. No more illusions, Spider-Man. We're Insidious 6. Insidious 6, originally known as Sinister 6, is a group of six villains who are one of the most formidable foes of Spider-Man. They are Dr. Octopus, Rhino, Chameleon, Shocker, Scorpion, and Vulture, who were brought together by Kingpin to kill Spider-Man. Initially, they wanted to work individually to bring Spider-Man down, but Kingpin reminded them of their defeats, and they agreed to work together. They lured Spider-Man out in the open by orchestrating a bank robbery, and when the hero reached the scene, he realized that it was a trap and got captured by Dr. Octopus. But an internal fight broke out between the villains to decide who would kill Spider-Man. Seizing the opportunity, he broke loose from Doc Ock and escaped. Another plan was created to capture him, kidnapping Aunt May because she was one of the people Spider-Man dearly cared about. But when it turned out to be another trap, he was already in shackles. When Doc Ock removed the hero's mask, it was none other than Peter Parker. He decided that this couldn't be the real Spider-Man because of the ease which he was apprehended. In their final fight against both Silver Mane and Spider-Man, they were again tricked by Spider-Man because they were still unclear about the hero's real identity, and this resulted in another sore defeat. The Insidious Six soon disbanded because they lost trust in Kingpin, with the reason being he could deliver his promises and went their own way. Dr. Octopus is one of the first villains Spider-Man encountered in the series. He has four metallic arms welded to his spine, which can bear weight several times more than his body weight, and also assist the scientist in climbing structures. Chameleon is a shape-shifting international terrorist who is also a hitman. He can change his voice and appearance into anyone that he's seen once, and is usually used as a bait to lure victims. Rhino has superhuman strength thanks to the radiation and chemical treatment he went through. Scorpion was created when Jay Jameson colluded with Farley Stillwell to experiment on Matt Gargan, a private detective. They combine his DNA with that of a scorpion with Neogenic Recombinator, giving him superhuman agility, strength, and speed. Shocker has a pair of Vibroshock gauntlets that zaps his enemies with huge voltage and blasts sound strong enough to punch a hole in the wall. Vulture has a flight harness that allows him to reach a top speed of 95 miles per hour, and due to his absorption of Spider-Man's mutation disease, he can climb walls, has spider sense and can spit acid. As commanded, you must be located, and then you must be Alistair Smythe Alistair Smythe was a genius inventor who worked for Kingpin. When he was young, he was trapped in a laboratory accident with his father, Spencer Smythe, who hated Spider-Man with all of his heart. Spencer died, but Alistair survived, leaving the laboratory with his legs crippled. Kingpin offered to fund his project to create robots called Spider Slayers to kill Spider-Man, and he agreed. Kingpin also falsely informed Alistair that Spider-Man killed his father, creating newfound hatred in his heart. Later, he modified his crippled lower body into a cyborg's and made a robotic carapace for himself in order to defeat Spider-Man, but it was in vain. But when Smythe got to know Kingpin was keeping his father alive in cryogenic suspension as leverage, he quit working for him and went to Silvermane with the condition that he helped Smythe free his father and bring him to life again. Smythe made a bioorganic carapace for his lower body that was paralyzed, which gave him superhuman powers. The cyborg parts granted him speed, superhuman agility, durability, and strength, as well as the ability to crawl walls like Spider-Man. He was also able to shoot lasers out of appendages that extended out of his shoulder bones, razor blades and talons on his arms and forearms, and artificial webbing from spinnerets near his wrists. Even though his planning and usage were meticulous, he still couldn't defeat Spider-Man. Black Cat Felicia Hardy was the daughter of the famous cat burglar Walter Hardy, who taught her that she should never think of settling for second best. After the father's arrest and multiple attempts to assault her, she was enraged by her lack of power and learned acrobatics and martial arts, and she was arrested when she followed her father's footsteps. She was freed from prison by her father's mentor, Black Fox, and amassed a great fortune through robberies. Then she assumed the masked persona of Black Cat and had an on-and-off relationship with Spider-Man. She wanted to gain his trust somehow, so she began to assist him in his crime-fighting activities, but they later parted ways due to differences in opinion. Felicia wanted Peter to join her in a life of crime, whereas Peter wanted to be Spider-Man and lead a normal civilian lifestyle. It was the first relationship in his life where he didn't have to hide his superhero persona 
but in the end, they amicably parted ways. Black Cat went to Kingpin to undergo the same mutation procedure that Scorpion and Fly went through, and gained superpowers which now aided her life of crime. After she underwent the procedure, Felicia gained an ability called Tychokinesis, which caused bad luck to the people around her, and also protected her from magic up to some extent. As her powers kept growing, so did her intensity of bad luck aura. Tychokinesis was transmitted based on probability, and this became one of her weaknesses when her opponents could control the factor of probability. She also has superhuman strength, agility, speed, martial arts expertise, and cybernetically enhanced claws on her fingers, which could extend on command. She was also an Olympic-level athlete, granting her great physical endurance. Prowler Hobart Brown was one of the men who worked for Iceberg, one of the villains in the Spider-Man series. He was the youngest of nine siblings, and after his father left them and his mother spiraled down to alcoholism, he had to take responsibility for his siblings. Despite being a genius inventor, he worked menial jobs to raise his family. When normal jobs didn't cut it for him, he took to a short-lived career in crime, donning a homemade suit and bracelets filled with pellets of sleeping gas to neutralize his victims. After getting caught by Spidey and going to prison, he met Richard Fist there and helped him get out of jail. This earned him Kingpin's favor, and he was employed as the Prowler. He then confronted Iceberg for his imprisonment and defeated him, making the crime lord his manservant. He escaped the clutches of Kingpin with the help of Spider-Man and helped the hero in various ways thereafter. Prowler impersonated Spider-Man on various occasions on request from the hero and helped him clear his name from the crimes that he was framed for. Hobie just wanted power so that he could protect his family, but a series of misguided bad decisions led him down the path of being a criminal and a wanted man. Hobie was a normal human without any superpowers, but had a genius intellect. It enabled him to make his own suit and weapons, such as gauntlets that shot sleeping gas pellets, metal darts, cleaning fluid, magnesium flares, and gas canisters that shot compressed air blasts. His gauntlets are also equipped with sharp claws to assist him in climbing structures. Black Widow 1 and 2 Alistair Smythe's father, Spencer Smythe, made a cybernetic robot called Black Widow that was supposed to kill Spider-Man. Norman Osborn funded this project due to their mutual hate for the hero and also to get out of the debt he owed to Kingpin. Spencer's Black Widow was nearly indestructible, immune to all attacks except a specific type of acid that can melt its body. It went out to capture Spider-Man, who was at a charity ball in the city and mistakenly captured Flash Thompson, who was wearing the spider suit. Spidey followed them to Oscorp, and they engaged in a tedious battle. It was defeated when it fell into the web trap. Spidey spun a web cartridge behind its jet, causing it to malfunction and fall into a vat of acid. This also caused an explosion and destroyed Oscorp. Black Widow 2 was created by Alistair Smythe as a part of Spider Slayers, an army of robots that aimed to kill Spider-Man once and for all. Alistair used his father's blueprints for his Spider Slayers, but also made additions such as grappling hooks and fangs that shot laser beams. He also made them self-sufficient so that he could just feed the command, and the robots could think for themselves as long as the mission was completed. He programmed three of his Spider Slayers, Black Widow 2, Tarantula, and Scorpion, to go after Spider-Man, Jameson and Osborn and capture them alive because he felt that each of them was the cause of his father's death. But each of the robot's plans failed to capture any of their targets and in turn caused tremendous property damage in the city, causing extreme losses from Kingpin, who employed Alistair. Alistair was fired from his post, causing him to destroy all three of his spider slayers. Black Widow 2 had many enhancements compared to the original, such as grappling hooks, laser beams, and larger fuel tanks to last longer and was much larger than a human being, almost 20 to 30 feet tall. It could also fly around and could spray corrosive acid onto its target. So, why'd you get invited to this little party? I'm a very wealthy... Silvermane. Silvermane was one of the main rivals of Kingpin and was also a crime lord who held a lot of power in the city. As he grew older, his obsession with regaining his youth intensified and he started to find ways to attain it. He had a daughter named Elisa that helped him spy over Dr. Connors who had the key to Tablet of Time, but Kingpin hired Insidious Six in order to capture Silvermane, who was rescued by Spider-Man. When Silvermane got his hands on the Tablet of Time, he also kidnapped Connors and his wife Martha to ensure that the scientist cooperated. Connors got the tablet working and Silvermane regained his youth. 
but it backfired when he started aging backward rapidly into a boy and then an infant, but still retained the consciousness of older Silvermane. Elisa fled from the scene with her infant father when Tombstone cranked the tablet up and tore the whole place down. Wanting to be a young man again, he planned to use Spider-Man. Spider-Man was soon captured, and when the tablet was about to activate, Vulture came in between and got hit by the rays. Since Vulture was an old man, Silvermane regained his old self while the supervillain stayed young. I can't stick! He's coated with some kind of super slick compound! Mega Slayer Mega Slayer was made by Alistair Smythe under the employment of Kingpin. When Kingpin got the information that the Tablet of Time was in the Empire State University, he asked Alistair to send Mega Slayer to retrieve it. But Spider-Man was present at the time and he prevented the robot from stealing the Tablet. After a lot of effort, it successfully stole the Tablet of Time, but was defeated in a battle with Tombstone, who took the Tablet and Connors to Silvermane. It was later destroyed when one of Silvermane's men fired a missile at it and it exploded. Smythe went on to create more of these Mega Slayers with enhanced features before he was fired by the Crime Lord. Mega Slayer was a humanoid robot, making it very versatile in movement and grabbing objects. It could also fly with the help of jetpacks strapped to its back, fire missiles, lasers and pulse blasters from its fingers, and also morph its hand into a pistol for smaller enemies. To combat Spider-Man's stickiness, it had a layer of a compound that was super slick. Smythe could operate it cybernetically, and his face was displayed on the screen of the robot's head. It was a formidable foe, but easily defeated by the superhero. Spot. Spot is the supervillain name of Dr. Jonathan Ong, who had the ability to walk with the help of the portals stuck to his body. He specialized in interdimensional technology and graduated from MIT in the beginning. He worked for Tony Stark as they developed the dimensional portal together, but when Mordo tried to summon Dormammu through it, Stark deemed it too dangerous and shut it down, angering Ong and causing him to quit. But he was quickly taken up by Kingpin, who wanted Ong to further his work. Ong fell in love with his assistant Sylvia while working on the portal, but soon realized that Fisk was Kingpin and wanted to flee. During an unfortunate accident, Ong got portals stuck all over his body and had the appearance of black and white. With his power, he began conducting robberies in order to break free from Stark and Kingpin, and accidentally opened stray portals all over the city, causing mass chaos. Together with Spider-Man, he tricked Kingpin into thinking that he was dead so that he could close all portals across the city. But a particular portal couldn't be closed from the outside, so he professed his love to Sylvia, and they both entered the portal together, never to be seen again. It's assumed that they were killed in the process. Spot had interdimensional portals stuck all over his body, which made him realize that he can basically walk to any place at any time he wants. The spots on his body can teleport an object or a person wherever he wants, but it is limited to the number of portals drawn on his body. He also possessed the ability to speak after he was decapitated, was immortal, and if his body was ever disintegrated, it could reconstitute itself back in the spotted dimension. Owl. When he made his debut in Daredevil No. 3, Volume 1, 1964, he was one of the original villains who were created for the series. Leyland Owl Owlsley is a crime lord of New York City and was an excellent financier on the Wall Street until the IRS came around and revealed his ties to the underworld. Due to this, he became depressed and took a serum that changed his bone density and allowed him periods of short flight or gliding. He created a small gang called Owl's Gang, which comprised of small-time thugs and paved his way to being one of the crime lords of the city. His main adversary was Daredevil, but he had his fair share of fights with Spider-Man, Dr. Octopus, and Black Widow. The source of the serum he obtained is unknown, but it hollowed his bones and gave him a pseudo-avian bone density. This allowed him periods of short flight, 100 feet, or gliding over short distances from a height. His airborne attacks usually start with freefall and end with a swoop attack with some improvisations. Although he has hollow bones, he's no less strong than most of the villains. He can easily press 600 pounds without any effort and can lift two grown men during flight. With a low fat-to-muscle ratio, he has denser musculature than the rest and it aids in his strength. He has many other superpowers, such as avian-like cardiac and pulmonary system, heightened senses, body manipulation, like hair and nails, durability, and photokinetic data acquisition. Miranda Wilson Miranda Wilson was a cyborg who was on Spider-Man's radar when she kidnapped Mary Jane for various reasons. Miranda was an actress who got scarred during an accident while shooting. Unable to face anyone, she ran through the sewers where she met Mysterio, whose headquarters were right beneath her studio. 
There, she was rebuilt into a cyborg with Mysterio's powers and Alistair Smythe's high-tech equipment, with one goal in mind, to have a human body again, somehow. This was when she kidnapped Mary Jane in order to transfer her mind into Jane's body. When Mysterio revealed that he couldn't find a way to transfer minds and that the machine was a fake just to keep her will to live alive, Miranda lost all hope and pressed the self-destruct button. While MJ escaped, Mysterio chose to stay behind for the woman he had fallen in love with. Wilson was a part cyborg who operated from a mechanical chair. She could connect to all of Mysterio's equipment, allowing her to access all of his robots, machinery, and illusion-casting devices. She used this to her advantage when she kidnapped Mary Jane for the mind transfer experiment. When Spider-Man approached her base, she sent clones of his most dangerous enemies, such as Dr. Octopus, Venom, Carnage, Mysterio, Rhino, and Lizard, with the real Mysterio assisting them. But they could only hold him back for so long, and he came in the nick of time to rescue Mary Jane, leading to Mysterio telling the truth about the machine to Wilson and causing her to activate the self-destruct button. Dr. Doom Victor Von Doom, better known by his alias Dr. Doom, is one of the most infamous villains ever to grace the Marvel Cinematic Universe. With his introduction in Fantastic Four Volume 1, Number 5, he was initially a friend of Reed Richards. Due to an accident of Reed's fault, Victor's face got horribly scarred, and thus the skull-like mask to hide it. He then went back to Latveria, his birthplace, and took over the entire country with his drones and genius intellect. Dr. Doom has one of the most interesting sets of abilities that make him a formidable foe. His primary skill is the ability to use dark arts, thanks to his heritage from his mother's side. Even Doctor Strange considers him to be powerful enough to be the next Sorcerer Supreme, surpassing Doctor Voodoo. But Doom is only interested in his scientific progression and has created numerous weapons that aid his purpose. With his diplomatic immunity as the monarch of Latveria and access to various valuable artifacts and ore mines across the country, Doom has created a titanium alloy high-tech suit with magical forging, and it has several enhancements such as electric shock, flight, force field, concussive blasts, sensor systems, infrared vision, and one more interesting thing, his armor has splinters of true cross, presumably to protect him from the undead, especially Dracula. Considering his time-traveling capabilities, this scenario might not be far off. The suit also has a recycling system that recycles air, water, food, and energy, allowing the wearer to sustain themselves for longer without taking any breaks. His genius intellect is one of the most powerful human minds on Earth. His creation, Doombots, are the mechanical clones of the Doctor himself. Doombots are usually used as his personal army and also replacements for occasions where he can't be present or when he feels like his death is certain. Doctor Doom is considered more intelligent than Reed Richards, since he could cure Grimm from his The Thing form, but Reed couldn't. Doom is naturally talented in politics, manipulation, leadership, and strategy, along with being proficient in physics, cybernetics, genetics, robotics, weaponry, and time travel. Tarantula Tarantula was one of the spider slayers Alistair Smythe built to kill Spider-Man. Along with Black Widow and Scorpion, it attacked Spider-Man, Osborne, and Jameson. It was built to resemble a tarantula, with a bulky body and mechanical limbs. It was auto-programmed and didn't need constant direction and input from Alistair, unlike the original Spider Slayer that Spencer had to operate personally. When Black Widow 2 failed, Alistair built tarantula with grappling hooks, high-voltage shock weapons in its mouth, missiles that fired analgesic, and a cryogenic cannon that shot freeze rays. It was also able to combine with the other two Spider Slayers, with Black Widow on top and Scorpion scorpion underneath, combining their attacks for greater force. It could fire missiles of many kinds, such as explosives and knockout gas, and even powerful lasers. It has jets attached to the limbs that allow it to fly over short distances, and it is larger than humans, giving it the advantage of size over Spider-Man. It also had a large fuel tank that allowed it to go without refueling for long periods of time, allowing it to focus on its mission. Black Widow, Tarantula, and Scorpion were defeated by Spider-Man when he electrocuted them with a high-voltage live wire and fried all their circuits. energy of the twelve moons of Moonipole! Dormammu. Dormammu is an extra-dimensional being that hails from a race called the Faltine, which is used to absorb energy for sustenance. But due to a genetic mutation, he and his sister Umar craved matter rather than energy, and they were exiled from their home dimension when they converted their progenitor, Sinifer, into matter, which is considered murder. They then discovered the Dark Dimension, where they both ruled together till he banished Umar after she gave birth to her daughter, Claire, and became weak enough to defeat. Dormammu is a demonic being who is the archenemy of Doctor 
Doctor Strange, along with Baron Mordo, his servant. There have been many attempts by Mordo to invite Dormammu into the Earth dimension, but Doctor Strange and Spider-Man have always managed to stop them. His age is unspecified, but he is considered to be millions or even billions of years old. Dormammu shifted his attention to Strange when he learned that he had the Wand of Watum which is a magical artifact that can open interdimensional portals. Baron Mordo sent his cultists to retrieve it from Sanctum Sanctorum, but Spider-Man teamed up with the Doctor to defeat them, where Spider-Man was brainwashed and they got the weapon. Mordo opened the portal where Doctor Strange had started fighting Dormammu. They were somehow able to escape from the Dark Dimension, sealing Dormammu for the time being. When it comes to his powers, Dormammu is considered the ultimate in magical and dark arts. He has the ability to absorb whole universes due to his need to consume matter. He can also shape shift, as shown in the comics when he shapeshifted into Philip Watson, Mary Jane's father, and a dragon. Shooting laser beams from his eyes and being able to use his powers while being on Earth is also one of his abilities. Perhaps, perhaps not. <laughs> Red Skull Johann Schmidt, infamously known as Red Skull, is one of the major antagonists in Marvel. Growing up as a lonely orphan, he wanted a master that could show him what true power looks like. That is when he met Adolf Hitler, the dictator of the Third Reich in Germany. Soon enough, he impressed Hitler enough that he was taken in for special training and made into the dictator's right-hand man who did all of his heinous dirty work without questions and was accountable to none except Hitler. Before World War II started, Red Skull was sent to the USA for terror spreading activities, where he had his conflict with Steve Rogers, who was later named Captain America, and they became each other's everlasting nemesis. He later became the leader of the Nazi organization Hydra, which aimed for world domination by using the Space Stone in form of the Tesseract. But he couldn't handle the immense power and seemingly got vaporized, and Hydra carried on without him. But it was later revealed that he was transported to Vormir, where the Soul Stone resided. Recognizing his evil intentions, the Stone rejected him and cursed him to be its guardian for eternity until someone worthy came along. After decades of waiting, his salvation came in the form of Thanos, who sacrificed his daughter Gamora for power and freed him from the curse, leaving him to his own devices once again. Red Skull would not have survived if not for his ability of mind transference across bodies whenever he felt his life was in danger. His mind has lived on with the help of cloning while his physical body kept getting destroyed. Schmidt never had formal education, but his intellect is nothing to scoff at. Trained personally by Hitler, he excels in military strategy, politics, organization, chemistry, physics, robotics, psychology, and philosophy, making him a formidable foe in terms of intelligence. One of his most deadly weapons is Dust of Death, whose composition is unknown. Known, but upon contact with the target, it causes instant shriveling and reddening of the skin, along with loss of hair. This gives the corpse the appearance of a red skull. Easy. It's the radiation. Radiation? Make that stuff dangerous? Not for someone with... Farley Stillwell. Remember the tiny spider that bit Peter Parker and turned him into Spider-Man? Yeah. So, Farley Stillwell was behind all of it. Stillwell was a scientist who experimented on radioactivity and neogenic. Along with Kurt Connors, he created the neogenic recombinator that allowed the fusion of human DNA with any other animal, and the Empire State University kept it. J. Jonah Jameson hired Stillwell because he wanted to create a villain that could defeat Spider-Man and took Mac Gargan as the subject. For the recombination, they used the DNA of a scorpion because it's the natural enemy of spiders, hoping that this would help in some way. And that's how the Scorpion was born, but it backfired because Gargan realized that he couldn't take the suit off and he went berserk. Stillwell started developing paranoia and was admitted to a mental hospital, and his fear came true when Scorpion kidnapped him and demanded that he be cured of his condition. But the scientist had no definite solution for that. When he escaped the clutches of the monster, he destroyed the recombinator so that it could never create another monster like this again. Farley Stillwell is a normal human without any superpowers or abilities, but he is still one of the antagonists because of his association with Kurt Connors and Jameson. He is highly knowledgeable in the fields of neogenics and radiology, and is the creator of the radioactive spider that transformed Peter into Spider-Man. Smooth as ice. Thanks, Iceberg. You know you can count on us. I used to think I could, but that was before I found out you were a Iceberg. Iceberg is Marvel's answer for DCU's Mr. Freeze. His personal history is scarcely mentioned, but in his early life, his genes were modified and due to that, he gained superhuman strength and durability, also increasing his affinity to cold environments. He then went on to work for Kingpin, but he was very unruly and disobedient, causing him to get fired. Later, Iceberg formed a small gang of his own and became an independent drug lord. He then employed Hobie Brown in his gang to do his dirty work, but Hobie planned to overthrow Iceberg and was taking his value 
valuables, finding himself in the crime lord's bad books and was thrown into jail. This was where he saved Richard Fisk from an assassination attempt and earned his freedom via Kingpin, who was Richard's father. Hobie was used later to defeat Iceberg, who was getting too powerful, according to Kingpin. Iceberg was defeated and put to work as Hobie's manservant. Since Iceberg was genetically engineered, he had complete immunity to cold environments and also possessed superhuman durability and strength. His weapon includes a handgun that shoots projectiles of ice that pierces the target completely. Rocket Racer Robert Farrell, aka Rocket Racer, was a victim of circumstance. Being the eldest child in his family and with the passing of his mother, he had to shoulder the responsibility of all of his siblings. When his regular income fell short, he turned to criminal activity under the moniker Rocket Racer. Being a scientific prodigy, he designed his own rocket-powered skateboard, which had incredible speed. His first encounter with Spider-Man happened when he stole a briefcase, but Spider-Man couldn't follow him because he was too fast. But Farrell crashed into a car and was handed over to the police. With the help of Tinkerer, he redesigned designed the skateboard to be easily maneuverable and with more power. He then hired Jackson Wheel to remove any incriminating evidence from the scene and used this fact to blackmail Wheel. This angered Wheel and he asked the help of Tinkerer to make a big wheel to chase Rocket Racer around the city. Rocket Racer and Spider-Man have an on and off rivalry between them because sometimes the superhero is chasing Farrell around and sometimes they team up to fight a common enemy. Rocket Racer is a mortal with no superpowers except for his genius intellect. Being a scientific prodigy, he made his own weapons and transport, namely his rocket skateboard. His skateboard is special because it's cybernetically controlled via his headset and is made with the help of Tinkerer, who is known for his proficiency in technology. It can adhere to any surface and incline, making it easy to escape from uh, sticky situations. His weapons include gauntlets that pack a heavy punch and are equipped with mini rocket launchers. Big Wheel Big Wheel was a technological friend who had a small gang that committed minor crimes such as robberies. His real name is Jackson Wheel, changed from Axel Wheel, a businessman who embezzled a tremendous amount of money from his company. He hired Rocket Racer to remove any incriminating evidence from the crime scene. Rocket Racer returned all the documents and evidence except one, the Minerva documents, and demanded exorbitant money for its return. This depressed Wheel and he wanted to commit suicide by jumping from the docks, but Rocket Racer saved him, saying that he would plague Wheel until he paid his money. This angered him, and he sought the help of Tinkerer to create a monowheel that was decked with various weapons to chase his blackmailer around. In the animated series, he was a petty criminal instead of a businessman to garner more sympathy for Rocket Racer's character. Big Wheel became a villain on a whim because he just wanted to get rid of his blackmailer. He constructed a monowheel which was heavily decked with machine guns and rocket launchers with many other weapons, usually long-range weapons, because Rocket Racer travels at high speeds. Other than that, he doesn't have any superpowers. Dr. Strange can win. Baron Mordo Carl Mordo was born to Baron Nikolai Mordo of Transylvania and Sara Crowler of Bavaria, making his lineage royal. When he learned that his mother only married his father so that Viscount Crowler could have someone for mind transference and later murdered him, he swore to avenge his father and started learning black magic from his grandfather. When he turned 18, he was sent to Tibet to find the Ancient One and learn magic from them. Mordo's hunger for power didn't go unnoticed by the Ancient One, but he thought he could control Mordo if he went down the wrong path. Path. Mordo later betrayed the Ancient One and made a contract with the dreaded Dormammu, a demonic interdimensional being. Mordo tried to offer his master's soul to the demon, but Doctor Strange gained the upper hand in a series of battles and saved his master from getting sacrificed. Mordo had instant resentment when he saw Strange at the monastery and thus began their lifetime rivalry. Dormammu used Mordo as his pawn to enter Earth, but Strange foiled their plans every time. Mordo later died of cancer in Sanctum Sanctorum after seeking everybody's forgiveness for all of his evil deeds. Deeds. But on one of their time-traveling adventures, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange found out that there exists a version of a young Mordo, which is much eviler. Mordo is a proficient magician and sorcerer who can tap into the universe's ambient energy and manipulate it to his will. He has many abilities, such as forming magic bolts, creating force fields, astral projection, thought casting or mind manipulation, and teleporting across dimensions. He can also cast spells that can make him levitate, create illusions, hypnotize someone, materialize something out of nothing, and necromancy, the art of commanding the dead. And that, everyone, was the story of 40 Spider-Man villains that definitely strikes the memories from our childhood. We hope you enjoyed the quick recap of the iconic evil minds as much as we enjoyed making this video for you. Do tell us your three most liked Spidey villains and why they are the best in the comments. We'll see you at the next one, but until then, 
Toodaloo. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Ah, time this just right.